What's up, everybody? We're back playing some poker at the lodge. Gonna be playing some 1 3 with the straddle on most of the time since 2 5 wasn't running tonight. And first hand of the night, we're gonna wake up with a decent one. Ace Queen offsuit. You already know any hand with a lady in it is beautiful to me. And we're gonna be on the button. And the $6 straddle is gonna be on. It's gonna fold all the way around to my opponent and cut off. And they're gonna be opening for $30. Kind of confused about this opening size here. 5x to straddle or ready to start for one of the first hands. This is insane. Really massive. I have to proceed with a little bit of caution here. But having such a strong start in hand, I'm still going to be going for the 3-bet here. I grab my chips and I'm going to be making it $90 to go. Everybody to my left is going to fold. And cut off thinks about it for a couple of seconds. But I mean, with opening that big size, I already see them calling. And yes, they do end up flicking in the call. And keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, we are a little bit deep here. So we're going to be going heads up to a flop of queen two five rainbow. Oh, baby, we're looking pretty good here. Plopping top, top here with my lady, of course. And it's even on a rainbow board. Dry texture. I'm loving what I'm seeing. And not being a pre-flop progressor, my opponent is going to be putting it in the check. And yeah, 100% going to be putting in a C-bet here. How can I not C-bet this flop? I grab my chips, load up the bet. It's going to be $60 to go. My opponent thinks about it for a couple of seconds, and I see them grab more chips than $60. And I'm like, oh, man, this is not going my way already because we are a little bit deep here. So I'm a little bit worried from the 5X preflop, and then now the check raising me. I uh, have to be a little bit scared, but I do have top top here. And I do see my opponent throw out a bet. And it's going to be a massive one. A 5x check raise all the way up to $300 to start. And yeah, this is huge. And I do not call right away. Because once again, I'm a bit worried about how the accent has gone so far in his hand. But I mean, I have top top. If they have a set, I guess take my money. Because I can't do anything here. Yeah, I'm definitely just going to have to be flicking in the call here. To at least see a turn. And we're going to go to it and it's going to come the 10 of hearts. Pretty decent turn here. Do like that it did come the 10 of hearts and it didn't come, let's say, a king. I believe my opponent can have that big 5x open pre and also this massive check raise with king queen. It doesn't always have to be a set and not much two pair combos from the flop that I really have to worry about. They're not going to be doing that with queen five suited and queen two suited. And yeah, it's almost impossible for my opponent to have queen 10 here. And there's going to be about $800 in the middle so far in this pot. And my opponent does think about it for another couple of seconds. But then he's going to announce he's all in on the turn. And I'm like, damn, well, with all those factors and me breaking down the hand play like that, I am ahead of king queen. We'll chop some ace queen and we'll lose the sets. I mean, that's pretty much it. Really hoping I can just see king queen here. So yeah, I do take a chip and I flick in the call. And we are just going to be running it one time and one time only. And we're going to go to the river and it's going to come a rubber ducky, two of diamonds. Pretty good run out here. Now it's even harder for my opponent to have a flop set unless they just rivered quad rubber duckies. That would be kind of insane. But if you have quads, then just take my money. I'm already ready to rebuy. And our opponent finally does flip over his cards and he turns over ace queen. And then I turn over my ace queen. So yeah, it looks like first spot of the night. It's just going to be a chop one. We're going to get the choppers. Feeling pretty good about that. Would have loved to just see king queen, but I don't. But hey, at least I did not lose to that random set of fives they could have had. And for the second hand of the night, I'm really going to wake up with it this time. I get the pocket queens, the ladies, my favorite hand of all time in small blind position the six dollar strata is going to be on again and it's going to fold all the way to my opponent and cut off they're going to be putting in the limp for six dollars button's going to be folding and you already know me we do not like limp parties so i'm going to be bumping it up we're going to be ice win and i go all the way up to 33 dollars it does fold to the under the gun straddle they're going to be putting in the call and my opponent and cut off is going to be putting in the call as well so we're going to be going three ways to a flop of 7 3 10 rainbow now if there's ever a good flop for the ladies this is it this board is slightly connected but not really and it's a rainbow board no flush draws out there we're looking pretty good 
Let's just hope somebody has some 10X and we can just start building up this pot. And with being the first one to act here and being aggressive with that ISO pre, I'm gonna be putting in a bet here. I grab my chips and I bet roughly 50% in the pot, I make it $50 to go. Unfortunately, the person with the most chips at the table, done in a gun straddle, they're gonna be laying down their cards. Sad, sad, sad. Would have loved to keep them in. But at least cutoff is gonna be putting in a call. And keep in mind, they are a little short stacked here. So we're definitely gonna be playing for stacks soon. And we're gonna go to the turn and it comes the four of spades. Once again, pretty good turn. I mean, if my opponent randomly has six, five, then yeah, you're gonna be taking all my money. There's roughly only $200 in the middle and my opponent only has roughly $200 behind. So with all those factors playing in, we're not gonna be able to bet three streets here. We're gonna have to go for it now. You already know what time it is. Gonna be an Aunt Jamam and Mom. Gonna be all in on the turn for $200. And within a second, my opponent puts in the call. It's pretty much a snap call there. We didn't even get to discuss if we wanted to run it once or twice. I was fine running it once anyway. Let's go to the river and hope it's a clean one. And it's gonna come the nine of hearts. At least it wasn't the nine of spades. But yeah, just hoping my queens somehow do hold here. The board is super connected now at this point. So I do turn over and show the ladies. And my opponent turns over their cards so fast. I thought they turned over two pair. But nope, they did not. They turned over eight, seven of spades. They did have second pair from the flop. And on the turn, they had a flush draw to go along with it. So they did have a decent amount of equity. But river is just a brick for them. And we scoop our second pot of the night with my favorite hand, the ladies. And I also want to give a special shout out to the dealer. I don't want to say her name just in case she didn't want to get mentioned in this. But when she sat down at the table, she did mention her husband loves watching my vlogs. And she usually watches them with him as well. So shout out to the both of them. And I love the fact that she sits down and within a couple of minutes, she deals me my favorite hand. I mean... Come on, some things in life you can't script as perfectly as this. And next hand, the ladies are still loving me. We're going to have a big one again. It's going to be ace queen suited, the heart variety on the button once again. And the six dollar strato is still going to be on here. It's going to fold to my opponent and hijack. They're going to be putting in a limp for six dollars. These damn limpers, I tell you, man. Oh, so just, uh, they just really grinds my gears. But at least even after they limp, cutoff is going to be putting in that ISO. That's what I love to see when I have a really good start in hand. They're going to be bumping it up. They make it $25 to go, so roughly 4x the straddle size in. And you already know we're going to be going for it. Not just going to be flat in such a strong hand here. On the button again. Love to play some three-bed pots in position. So I grab my chips. I'm going to be bumping it up. And we're going to be making it $75 to go. It's going to fold all the way back around to my opponent and hijack. I guess their limped hand isn't strong enough. They're going to be folding, but cut off. They're going to be putting in a call. And we're going to be going heads up to a flop of Jack 3-7 Rainbow. Seems like every flop tonight is just a rainbow one. There is a seven of hearts on the board. And I don't have top here, but at least I do have two overs to the jack on the board. And we could go runner runner for a straight. So I have a shit ton of equity on this board. Loving what I'm seeing so far. My opponent is going to be putting in a check. And yeah, maybe once in a while I can check back here. Maybe half the time I can check back here. But yeah, am I going to do that? Uh, Probably not. Not going to be checking here. I'm going to grab some chips. I'm going to aggressive pre. I'm keeping my foot on the gas. And I'm going to be putting out a massive bet. Not going small this time. I make it $120 to go. After a couple of seconds, they're going to be putting in the call. We go to the turn and it comes the eight of clubs. Cutoff is going to be putting in the check, and that's not the greatest turn. Um, Yeah, hands are starting to get there. I would have loved if I saw the eight of hearts. Maybe if I was able to put my opponent on a weaker holding, I can find a barrel here. But after betting so big on the flop, I'm going to chill. Let's see a river. Hopefully it's a good one. So I'm going to be putting in the check, and we go to it, and it comes the eight of hearts. Another eight ball corner pocket, but it's not going to help out my hand right now. My opponent in the cutoff puts in a check, and yeah, don't really see any merit in betting here with my really strong ace high. Let's see if maybe we can win a showdown. I put in a check. My opponent turns over. Jack 10 suited. 
and it was the heart variety if only if only we found a flush here i mean we're just playing for sacks at that point would have been beautiful but yeah i'm just gonna mock my ace high do lose our first hand of the night but not complaining didn't lose too much money and now we're gonna have the best drawing hand in poker suited again heart variety we keep just getting a bunch of hearts ace king suited and yes it is everybody's favorite drawing hand and some people don't like it but i love it i believe it's the fourth best hand in poker i'll put it over pocket jacks some people believe it's like the 20th best hand i guess they'd rather have like seven six suited i don't know but i love it anyway six dollar straddle is going to be on and we are going to be in early position but opponent on my right and under gun plus one they're going to be putting in a limp you already know how i feel about limps so we're definitely going to be isoing so i'm going to be bumping it up all the way to 40 dollars. we are playing a little bit deep here and surprisingly everybody to my left is going to fold and it's going to come all the way back around to my opponent that put in a limp and they're not folding thank goodness they're going to be putting in a call so we're going to be going heads up to a flop of three king jack rainbow and once again another rainbow flop but this time i don't have that backdoor equity for the nut flush no hard on board but that's all right we have top top again how can i complain let's hope this time my opponent doesn't just start check raising me and shit on the flop but yeah looking pretty good here my opponent's gonna be putting in the check and we're keeping our foot on the gas i'm gonna be putting in a bet here i make it 45 dollars to go doesn't take my opponent too long they're gonna be flicking in the call so we're going to the turn and it comes the three of hearts my opponent puts in the check and yeah the board did pair here can my opponent have a three i don't really see my opponent having much 3x here with their limp in under the gun and then call in to be honest so yeah with that factor playing in and still having top pair top kicker we're gonna be firing that double barrel i grab my chips preparing for a little bit of a bigger bet on the turn and i make it 140 dollars to go my opponent thinks about it for a little bit longer this time but yes they're still gonna be putting in a call so we're gonna go to the river and it comes a rubber ducky two of hearts that's what i like to see a nice beautiful blank river there is no card in a deck to come on a river that's more blank than a rubber ducky they're gonna be putting in a check and yeah top top here i am not slowing down this is how you play ace king you play it aggressive Foot is still on the gas like I'm driving a Dodge Viper. Yes, I said Dodge Viper instead of a Lamborghini or Ferrari. Too common, too common, right? Anyway, I'm grabbing my chips. We're loading up the clip. I'm going to be firing a massive bet on the river. I make it $350 to go. This time, they're not that quick to put in a call. They go in the tank. And they tank and they tank and they tank for roughly a half a minute or so. But finally, they flick in the call with them tanking that long and then calling i already know i'm gonna be good here i turn over my ace king and they do flip and they mock their cards it was nice enough to let me know they did have king queen not sure if it was suited but that's what they said they had so very nice pretty much feel like we got almost the maximum there really love how this session is going and next hand tonight we're gonna have a bomb pod at the lodge if you're not familiar with bomb pods here it is a plo double board bomb pod each player at 1-3 is going to be putting in $10. And it's beautiful to have that bomb pot button. And I do. And a dealer that dealt me pocket queens. And also is a big fan of the vlogs. Shout out to her and her husband once again. She deals me pocket queens once again. But it's a bomb pot, so a little bit different. And we do have an 8 and a jack to go along with it. Unfortunately, my holding is rainbow, so I can't even hit a flush. But yeah, let's see what we can do. It's going to be seven ways. So there's going to be $70 in the middle. And we're going to be going to two flops of eight, 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 and five deuce seven rainbow. Oh my goodness. Are you kidding me? She's becoming my favorite dealer at the lodge in the span of just a couple of hours. I just flopped quads. Are you fucking kidding me? This is insane. And if y'all do know, my second favorite hand is pocket eights so now i don't have pocket eights in my hand but i hit quads with the eight ball corner pocket i mean come on now this is just amazing so we know we do have the nuts on one board don't have the nuts on the second board but let's hope we can build this up and surprisingly nobody's putting in any money it does check all the way around to me on the button i'm not gonna be putting in a bid bet here i just make it ten dollars to go and we're gonna have three callers they're gonna be in small blind 
big blind and under the gun position so we're going to be going four ways to the turn and on the top board is going to come to nine of clubs on the bottom board is going to come to five of clubs so we'll still have quads of course and at least my over pair is still in play on the other board i am now losing to a random 5x unfortunately let's just hope nobody has trips and even if they did they still have to tread cautiously because in a bomb pot ranges are infinite everybody's going to be putting in the check and this time i'm going to be sizing up we're not doing that little ten dollar bet grab my chips i'm going to be making a hundred dollars to go small blind's going to be put in the call big blind's going to be put in the call and under the gun is going to be folding so i'm still slowly reeling everybody in here which is feeling pretty good and we're going to go to the river three ways and it's going to come the king of hearts and the five of spades what a beautiful run out on the bottom board i now have fives full of queens it is going to be really hard for anybody else to have quads here so i'm feeling pretty good about my quads on the top board of course because it's the nuts and my boat on the bottom i'm only going to be behind to pocket sevens pocket kings and pocket aces and kind of hard for someone to have pocket kings there's a freaking king on all the board right so yeah feeling pretty good they do check to me and of course, we're going to be bad in here. It is three ways. So I decide to use a specific size in here. I do not go for pot. Yes, I know people just love potting, but not this time. Not going to be doing that. Think about my sizing. Grab my chips. I'm just going to be making it $250. And only one opponent to my left is going to be putting in the call. And I let them know, well, I have quads and a boat. And they shake their head and they say, damn, are you kidding me? They end up showing pocket nines or nines full of eights on the top board and they have nothing on the bottom board so what a great fantastic situation for me i managed to scoop this entire bomb pot because my opponent had a hand on only one board and nothing on the other board my fives full of queens is also the nuts at this point we scooped the entire pot shout out to this dealer once again love to see it and the very next hand, once again, you cannot script this shit. This is the next hand after the bomb pot. She deals me pocket queens, the ladies, again, in hijack. This is the third time of the night that she has dealt me pocket queens. It's literally insane. Let's hope we can build up this pot. And unfortunately, the shadow is not going to be on this time when I have the ladies. But under the gun is going to be open into $15. Under the gun plus one is going to be put in the call. And of course, we're going to be putting in the three best squeeze here. We are playing a little bit deep with our opponents. Grab my chips. I make it $50 to go. And it does fold to button. And surprisingly, they're going to be put it in the three bet cold call here on the button. I'm like, oh, okay, that's kind of sucks. I would have had possession on my two opponents and under the gun. Now I have to worry about some random range to my left one button. And it does fold all the way back around to my opponents and under the gun. And the original Razor is going to be 4-bet. Yes, they're putting in that 4-bet all the way up to $200. Plus 1 is going to fold. And like I said, we are playing deep. So not going to be going for it here. I got position. I'm just going to be flicking in the call. And Button, I guess, still has a decent hand. They're going to be coming along with the call too. This is a crazy pot brewing already. We have $600 or so in the middle. And we're going to be going three ways to the flop. And it's going to come four queen for rainbow. I mean, holy shit. This is in fucking insane. I just flopped the stone cold nuts, ladies and gentlemen. And yeah, y'all think, oh yeah, somebody can have quad fours. No, nobody has quad fours. Okay, whatever. Like the person who four bed doesn't have quad fours. The person to my left doesn't have quad fours. Like, no, I, I'll be okay. Best case scenario, somebody just has a four, right? Like ace four suited. Maybe some random king. No, no king four suited. Just ace four suited. All right. But yeah, I have to say, feeling pretty good here. My opponent in under the gun is going to be put in a C bet. They don't make it too big though. Just the same size they four bet pre. They make it $200 to go. And don't really see a merit in raising here. So I'm going to take my chips. I'm going to be flicking in a call, just praying that my opponent on button cold call with some nonsense they could continue with just to give me some more free money. Unfortunately, button is going to be folding. So we're just going to be heads up at this point. And we go to the turn and it comes the two of clubs. 
rubber ducking on the turn that's fine no problem hoping my opponent just continues the barrel let's hope they have kings let's hope they have aces they do tank a little bit this time on the turn they don't make that quick of a decision they're going to be putting in the check and i see the amount that we have in the middle i already was aware of my opponent's stack as maybe roughly 700 to 750 behind so yeah this time around i'm not going to be better in the turn based on the stack to pot ratio i'm gonna chill see i know when to not be aggressive right i know when to chill i just check it back and we go to the river and it comes the six of clubs pretty good river here would love if my opponent somehow rivered a flush with like ace king suited or some random club combo they decided to four bet and they do once again go into the tank they tank they tank they tank roughly 20 seconds or so go by and they announce they're gonna be all in i'm like oh baby that's music to my ears i flick in a call the quickest i could ever call the nuts in my life because i already know that i won my opponent confidently yes he confidently turns over king queen of clubs and i let him know yo i got a boat the ladies pocket queens and you hear the oohs and ahs of the table literally insane we stack him for a massive amount of money but once again the dealer she is just dealing me heat and it must have been meant to be to receive pocket queens and just flopped this board i mean just so insane so shout out to her again thank you for dealing me such beautiful hands and it does help that i know how to play them right so we do take down another massive pot at the lodge next hand for the night it's gonna be a regular starting one. It's just King Four offsuit in big blind. No straddles on to my left. Under the gun is gonna be putting in the limp. It's gonna fold to my opponent and cut off. They're gonna be limping. And small blind's gonna be limping. No point in ISO in here. My hand kinda sucks. So I'm just gonna be checking my option and let's go to a flop. And we're gonna go to it four ways. And it's gonna come four king four <laughs> two diamonds. I mean Jesus. We are really running hot at the lodge this is insane i just flopped pretty much once again the stone cold nuts nobody has kings here get over it and it can't have quads so yeah small blind is going to be put in a check i'm in big blind i'm checking as well under the gun checks and cutoff checks i'm like damn come on man somebody throwing like three dollars or some shit but oh well we're gonna go to the turn and it's gonna come the jack of clubs and now we're starting to see somebody grab chips. Small blind, first to act. They're going to be putting out a pretty healthy wager here of $25. That's an overbet compared to what's in the pot. So, hey, I'm all for it. Not going to raise here. I'm just going to be putting in a call. Hoping that somebody behind me calls as well. Because it's free money once again. Under the gun does come along with the call. And cut off is going to be folding. We're going to go to the river and it comes a my lady, the queen of hearts. Still feeling pretty good about this run out. Unfortunately, small blind is going to be checking. And yeah, it looks like I'm going to have to do the betting myself. So I do grab my chips. I load up a decent sized bet. Not too massive. I just make it $60 to go. Under the gun does fold. And small blind goes into the tank for about 30 seconds to a minute. I'm like, damn, they're really taking pretty hard here. But eventually they do fold and they fold face up showing king three offsuit. So I guess they felt like their king wasn't good, which it's kind of weird to not call a king if you think about it based on a run out because they have a pair of kings and a pair of fours. The queen kicker is going to be their kicker on the board. So it's not like they need the three. I'm not sure if they were fully aware of this, but I mean, like, I don't see a reason to fold here unless you really believe I have a straight like I have to have a straight or some random other two pair that I just check behind in big blind. I mean, I don't know. I think they should be putting in the call for this size and folding a king here is a little bit rough. But hey, how do you feel about my thought process there? Would you have called or folded in the spot if you were them? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And next one, I'm going to get dealt pocket fives in the big blind. There's going to be a $6 straddle on this time. My opponent and under the gun, they're going to be opening for $20. Folds all the way around to button. They're going to be put in the call. Small mind's going to fold. And I'm going to be put it in the call. So we're going to be going three ways to a flop up two king five rainbow. I mean, this is kind of insane. I know I'm running hot. Sorry, not sorry. There's no way I'm sorry. I am loving this. 
we flop a set of fives feeling pretty good here hoping that we can build this pot as big as possible i'm gonna be checking not being a pre-flop aggressor under the gun puts in the check and then even button's gonna be checking so it does check around not what i want to see it's like the same situation where i just had to boat the last hand and now have a set and nobody's putting money in the middle come on where are the c bets at but yeah we're gonna go to a turn and it comes the ten of clubs so we now have a rainbow board on the turn not much drawers out there but i gotta start putting money in this pot i do grab my chips i make it 30 dollars to go under the gun puts in the call and button's gonna be folding and really rough size there with the 30 dollars believe i misclicked in live poker i did not want to only bet 30 dollars to be honest yeah kind of misclicked there but oh well we're gonna go to the river heads up and it's gonna come the four of diamonds would be insane for my opponent to river straight here with like ace three so yeah not really worried we're gonna be putting out a bet here and there's not that much in the middle so we're gonna be going for it i'm grabbing my chips and i'm doing my famous over bet yes we're over betting putting in a lot of money grab my chips and i'm gonna be making it a beautiful 160 dollars my opponent goes in a tank for about 15 20 seconds but yeah they're not gonna be putting in a call they do lay down their cards we've been getting paid a lot early in the session when we made our hands but right now we're just not getting paid unfortunately the next hand we're gonna have a 10 offsuit we are playing a little bit short here since it's getting later at the lodge and i'm gonna be in big blind no straddle is gonna be on but is gonna be opening for 15 dollars Blind is gonna be put in the call small blind calls and yeah i'm gonna be flicking it as well i put in the call we're gonna go four ways to a flop of 10 8 6 two spades don't have a spade in my hand at all so that's a little bit worrisome but we do have top here top kicker but it is a four way pot so yeah pretty hard to win a four way pot when you only have top here or top kicker just so many cards right and small blind oddly is going to be leading here four ways yeah they lead four ways and they make it 20 dollars to go so not the biggest lead here but yeah kind of alarming so i'm just gonna be putting in a call not gonna raise here this time around and both my opponents in cutoff and button are gonna be folding so we're just gonna go heads up to the turn and it comes the ace of clubs i mean beautiful turn for me we now have top two pair now i'm feeling pretty good about my hand wasn't as much on the flop but yeah, this is a pretty good spot to be in, especially having position on my opponent in small blind. And they're still going to be leading out here. They grab their chips and they make it $35 to go. And with having top two pair, not having a spade in my hand, and there's a flush on board, you already know what time it is. We're going for the raise in position. We got to bump it up and we go all the way up to $185. Yes, that's a massive raise in position, but we are playing pretty deep here. My opponent does go into the tank for about 30 seconds. Unfortunately, they're going to be laying down their cards. So at least I scoop a pot and don't run into some random flopped set. So not going to complain here. A W is a W. And at this point of the night at the Lodge, we are playing three-handed on the last table of the night. And we're going to have Jack 4 suited, the famous Jack 4, on the button. And they have been button straddling, so... Hey, I'm going to do the same thing if they want to do that. I'm not the biggest fan of a button straddle three ways, to be honest. I'd rather just up the blinds and play normal poker. But yeah, here we are. So I do end up straddling a button for $10. Small blind is going to make it 20. Big blind is going to fold. And I'm going to be putting it in a call. So we're going to go heads up to a flop of six to ace, two diamonds. Looking pretty good here. Let's hope diamonds are forever. And we somehow find that third diamond on this board because we would have the fourth nuts which is pretty good when you're only playing three-handed right and my opponent in small blind still gonna be betting here they make it twenty dollars to go and i'm not gonna raise this time i know we are playing really deep here but i'm just gonna be putting in a call so i flick it in and we go to the turn and oh baby this comes the ace of diamonds we just keep hitting cards tonight at the lodge and I am hoping and hoping, please keep putting money in. Please keep putting money in. And they do just that. They grab their chips again and they're going to be fine out a bet of $60. And I'm thinking, hmm, should I put in a call? Should I raise? And yeah, this time around, I'm not going to raise. I'm just going to be putting in a call here. Let's see that river. And we go to it and it comes the king of hearts. Pretty solid river here. Not complaining. 
do have to sometimes worry about boats and higher flushes, but yeah, how often is that going to happen when you're playing three-handed? And we have been playing three-handed for a little bit, though. This opponent has beaten me in a couple of pots, which has been killing my great day. They do end up firing out a bet of $150, and this is the second time I saw them triple barrel me. The first time they triple barreled, which is a hand I didn't show, end up having top here, decent kicker with ace jack on a really dry board. And they end up showing ace king. So yeah, they're triple barreling me again, and I'm like, I don't even want to raise here because the only time I've seen them triple barrel after we've been playing for the past 30 minutes to an hour, they just had me completely dominated. So based on those factors and my reads on this opponent and how they've been betting, their sizes, etc., and history with them, I'm not going to go for the raise. Yeah, I'm not going to go for the raise. I'm just going to take my chips and I'm going to flick in the call. And well behold, they turn over King Queen of Diamonds <laughs> for the nut flush not the nuts but the nut flush so yeah i did have the third nuts on the board with the ace of diamonds being there but yeah i mean i just feel like i was beat and i didn't really feel like i was beat i just used my knowledge based on how the day has gone playing three ways with this opponent and yeah just a good read put it in a call would have just lit money on fire if i did raise so we do take an l with the famous jack four suited Oh, baby, we're going to have a big one at the lodge. We were running hot, playing 1-3. I'm going to somehow manage to finish up $1,420.